Therefore let us feast, not with the old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Where it's taken from our epistle today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today, Easter Sunday, let us briefly consider the resurrection as a way to understand the transition from the time of fasting to the time of feasting. Christ exchanges his suffering body today for one that can suffer no more, even though it bears the wounds, an immortal, a perfectly spiritualized body. And so too, in a sense, should we trade in our penances. It is a good time to reflect on our Lent, to see if we did all that we set out to. If we did, then take some special time and thank God for his grace to do so. For nothing good that we do comes from ourselves, all comes from God. Or did we fail in our attempts? Well, why? Was it because we were lazy and selfish? We must try better next year. Or did we try to take on too much, more than our physical frame could endure, out of pride or a desire to be like those great penitential saints when we are but weak little sinners? Has God shown us ourselves in our penances? Finally, it's good to ask ourselves, which ones are we especially glad to be free of? or at least until next year, in which ones might we actually miss? That is, before you start doing things like playing video games or reading news articles for hours at a time, we ought to ask ourselves, now that we've gotten out of the habit of certain things, do we really miss them? Is our life better without them? Are we happier? without them? Are we holier without them? Perhaps your life is more enjoyable without them, and perhaps God is telling you to make this a permanent change. If you quit smoking, something like that, why go back? In any case, it's good to plan now for how to retain at least a little penance in our lives throughout the week, particularly on Wednesday, Friday, or Saturday, especially to avoid that temptation to kind of relapse or boomerang um, and overindulge because, you know, it's Easter. Well, if we keep a penitential day during the week, we, we live like a little Lent, that will help curb that. Prayer too. Did you pray more during Lent and worry less? Is that something you want to continue? More to our point today. If you have taken on humbling penances, and I hope that you have, mostly succeeded, as I hope that you have, then even when you give up that physical penance, just like our Lord gave up or put aside his suffering body, retain the spiritual one. That is, if you fasted greatly, remember, remember this when dessert comes around and there's only one chocolate thing and you really want it. Or when you really want the best dessert or anything else like that. You know now that you can go without it entirely. You can go without it for 40 whole days. It's good to remember so you stay your hand and stay your pride. Stay your greed. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I don't need that. He can have it. Oh, everyone else had dessert before I got here? It's all gone? Oh, well, okay, you know, whatever. It's not like it's 40 more days of land, it's just one day. Some people, brave women, gave up makeup. 
If you've humbled yourself, given up your makeup, slept on the floor like a slave, remember that humility you know you can do when your pride rises up on the inside. We want to bring those penances that we undertook, even as we discharge the physical aspect of it, even as we move beyond that, we want to retain that spiritual aspect. We want to say, oh, you know, here I, I humbled myself greatly. I treated myself like a slave. I didn't wear makeup. I did the other things. So I should be better at humbling myself than spiritually. I know I have the strength. I know I can do it. I just have to do it. So you can retain your humility even as you go back to your comfortable bed, put your makeup on, do other things. And if you can't, then that's what your little penitential day is for during the week. I hope this is true of all of you, that Christ has worked great things for you during Lent. Because of the penances you've taken on, or because of those that he has seen fit to give you. It's great wisdom, knowing exactly what you need. The ways that he has let the devil tempt you. The evil people and events he has let afflict you. And again, we want to retain the good effects of these as we enter, as we ought to, with joy into the Easter season. We must never stop watching ourselves for sin. Therefore, we must watch our feasting as well. Do not return to vice. Do not return to overindulgence, to the leaven of malice and wickedness. Again, remember that those material, more material vices so easily bleed into or represent those spiritual vices. Overindulging on gossip or slander or these other things. Feeding our mouths with the blood of our neighbor, as St. Francis de Sales says. So do not return to those. Instead, spiritualize your feasting. It's good to say grace before meals. It's good to remember the reason why we feast why we've taken off our penances when we return to those comforts, those good things, to give thanks to God, to our Lord and Jesus Christ, whose resurrection is the only thing that can bring joy into our lives. Feast on sincerity and truth, just like the Apostle says. So enjoy those things. Sleep in your bed. Enjoy your desserts. But above all, let your soul feast on the good things with which Christ has fed you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.